Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another video on PS4 Linux. This video is going to be a short one, which is an extension to the video I did on Bathosera 40 for PS4. So many of you guys have been shying away from trying Bathosera 40 on your PS4 just because of the installation steps, which requires a Linux machine and is sometimes considered complex. So this is a solution to that. In this video, I'm going to show you my specially designed initramfs that would make the whole process of installing and setting up Bathosera 40 on your PS4 a breeze. Apart from that, the initramfs image also has updated by Binaries of tar, exe, and certain other applications, which is also a plus point. And moreover, it also has an additional feature that is a progress bar. You know how it is not exactly convenient for you to just be seeing all those files that are extracted to your drive during installation, but not know how long it is going to take. Well, with this init RAM, that is also fixed because this has an actual functioning progress bar that will show you the exact progress on the extraction and the copying of files and also show you the ETA on that process. We'll see all of that in action in this video, okay? And moreover, I would also like to quickly announce the new project on PS4 Linux that is codenamed Alpha DOS. Currently, we are a very small team, including me and a very adventurous tinkerer who is into PS4 Linux and many other stuff. The same person who also sponsored Bathosera 40 for PS4. And we also were able to get Mirko Ho or uh, the guy behind PS4 Gen 2 and the GitHub on PS4 boot into this project of ours. So we are currently working on updating the kernels for all the PS4s hopefully and also working on certain other projects which have been shelved for a pretty long time now. So wish us luck on that project. Now let's quickly jump into the tutorial where we're going to learn how we could easily set up Bathosera 40 for PS4 using this new initramfs that you see right here. We'll obviously begin with the requirements. The first is obviously the distro file, for which you can find the link in the description and then the initramfs, again, find the link in the description and then the BZ image, which depends upon your PS4 Southbridge, okay? All of these have been explained in detail in the AIO documentation, which you can find on ps4linux.com. All of these, again, will be linked in the description. Go to check that out, okay? For Bathosera 40, I have always recommended a 5.4 plus kernel, so make sure that you have that. These are the three files that you will require, and on top of that, you will also require a USB drive, okay? I have my USB drive uh, plugged in right now on my system. I would recommend an SSD for this tutorial or for running Bathosera 40 because it is obviously faster. So once you have all of that ready, the first piece of application that we will require is the FAT32 GUI format, which I've already linked here, okay? I'm just gonna quickly open it and make sure that my drive is properly selected here, the USB drive that I plan on installing Bathosera too. So that is properly selected here and also make sure that you don't have any important data in here because you're going to lose this after this process is complete because this is going to format it. Okay. Once you're ready, just click on start and then click on OK. All right. This will format the drive and make it ready for our installation part. Okay. So I'm going to quickly close it. So now I'm going to quickly copy all the three files right here and then go to my USB drive right here and then paste those three files here. Okay. Now all the three files have been copied successfully. Now I can safely unplug the USB drive from my PC and plug it into the PS4. I'll see you on the PS4, okay? So right now I'm on my PS4 and I have already plugged in the USB drive with the Bathosera files on it. And then I'm gonna go to my internet browser, go to my favorite exploit host site that is jb.psfullinux.com, go to Linux and choose your favorite payload. This would obviously require that you use a 1GB VRAM payload for installation. Once installation is complete, you can reboot and choose any other payload according to your wish. But for the installation part, you will have to necessarily choose the 1GB VRAM payload, okay? So I'm gonna choose that. So we are currently booting into the Bathosera init RAM. Let's just wait for it to boot, okay? There you go. The script has already started. It has not found Bathosera yet, so it is switching to the installation wizard, okay? And the first thing it is gonna ask is whether you wish to use Wi-Fi or not. So I'm gonna provide Y to that, okay? To say that, yes, I wanna use my Wi-Fi. And then I'm gonna press enter. And the first thing it's gonna ask is your Wi-Fi access point name, which obviously depends on your setup. For in my case, it's home Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna provide that. This again is case sensitive, okay? And then press enter. And then I'm gonna provide a Wi-Fi password. That is the password to my home Wi-Fi, okay? I've already provided it. As you can see, nothing appears on the screen. This has been done for security purposes. Okay. Now, once you've provided that, press enter. Okay. And this will set up the whole thing for you. First of all, it will copy the Bathosera file to the RAM. As you can see, this is the progress bar that I was talking about. This is pretty handy when it comes to the installation part because this will tell you exactly how much time is left on the installation part. Okay. This is just showing the copying part. In a few moments, you will see the extraction process as well, showing this progress bar. And to the right of it, you can also find the ETA. Just wait for a moment. 
and here you go this is the actual part where the extraction process starts okay so let's wait for that and as you can see this is the progress bar that i was talking about and on the right side of it you can find the eta currently it says that it's going to take uh, around eight minutes for the whole process to complete okay we'll wait for that and also just a note on that i'm using a usb drive right now because i don't have an ssd handy but as i had mentioned in the starting of the video please try to use an ssd for bathosera okay And that's it, the extraction is complete. Now it's gonna configure the Wi-Fi and the Bathosara data drive, both. This means that you don't have to do anything after the installation. Everything would be set up for you, including the Wi-Fi, the Bathosara games drive, and everything else. That is, after the installation, you will be ready to use Bathosara completely. That's it, cleaning up. And now it's gonna do some basic cleanup. And the next thing you're gonna boot into is Bathosara, all right? And that's it, the boot process has begun. So now on some PS4 models that you would see that the screen goes black soon after this step. I've already talked about the solution to this problem in my earlier video, okay? That is the release video on Bathosera 40. So right now when you see this black screen, all you have to do is unplug your HDMI cable and replug it, okay? And then wait for some time, okay, where it boots. And as you can see, we have the terminal back again. Okay, in some cases, you might not be fast enough to get this. That is, you know, like quickly unplug the HDMI and replug it. Okay, in that case as well, I'll show you the solution. Okay, just wait for a few minutes. Okay, here we have Bathosera loaded. And as you can see, I'll just quickly show you right now. Okay, I'm going to press on F1 to show the file manager. And as you can see, the user data folder has been successfully loaded. This actually gives us the correct data because I'm using a 28 GB pen drive. We do have 17.2 GB allotted to user data, which makes sense. Okay, so that means the Bathosera games drive has been successfully updated. Okay, thanks for the special in a MFS. Okay, I'm gonna quickly close it and go back to our uh, Bathosera window. And now let me quickly talk about the scenario where we see that you could not unplug the HDMI and replug it quick enough. In that case, all you have to do is press on Control, Alt and F10 and then wait for the terminal to show up. As you can see, there's a blinking cursor at the top left. It's not blinking, it's static, okay? If you see that, then press on Control, Alt and F11 together. This will drop you to this terminal. Now press Control, Alt and F2 to be dropped into this terminal where you will type start X and then press enter, which will drop you into Bathosera's main menu, okay? As you can see right here. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.